Good afternoon and welcome to Mike and the Haas on Wolfboro Community Television. I'm Mike Denae. And I'm Charlie Hossack. Today, Charlie, we're going to preview a couple teams at Kingswood, local teams at Kingswood. We have Mike Shaw, the Kingswood Varsity softball coach, coming in. Mm -hmm. And Megan Anderson, the new Kingswood Varsity lacrosse awesome. coach, the girls coach. Girls coach, yeah. And I, be I believe that coach um, is, the lacrosse coach is bringing in her captains also. Oh, great. So we get a little Talk bit some of the like, players, yeah. yeah. Which, you know, we, yeah. We, you know, we like to do. Yeah. And these are two new coaches. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, coach Shaw's right. first year first and year then too. Coach Anderson's first year. Yeah. So, so. it's uh, it'll be interesting to see how they're putting together their teams yep. and their outlook because we're hoping to talk about them throughout the year. It'll be great. Um, and then, I, uh, I know softball's opening up tomorrow, so yep. it'll be great. Um, then we get to some Celtics, some Bruins. Yep. And we're going to get to some Red Sox. At least some Red Sox. Okay. <laughs> they right. won last night. They did. Yeah. So, so what should we say? Mitch Moreland won last Mitch night? Mitch Moreland's won all four games yes. for them. We'll yeah. talk about Mitch a little bit when we get there. But um, it's been a rough start to the season. It has been. So yes. It's early. They got, they've got they um, got you know Baltimore coming up. So we'll, we'll see. But I'm, we also said that about Oakland and Seattle and uh, Toronto. I'm, I'm a little concerned because if the Bruins and the Celtics bow out early and the way the Red Sox are going, we're going to be talking about the circus coming to town here <laughs> in May. So. We'll have to go to youth sports. We'll talk youth sports. <laughs> All, right. All right, so uh, we're ready to get going? Sounds good. All right, we'll be right back. Mike in the Austin, Wolfboro Community Television. <laughs> Welcome back to Mike in the Haas. Uh, Joining us, as promised, is Mike Shaw, the Kingswood Varsity softball coach. Um, coach, welcome. Thanks Thank for you. coming. Thanks this, for your, this is your first year? This is my first year coaching varsity. Yes. Varsity. So what Congratulations. Yeah, what, yeah. Brought, what brought you to Kingswood? Uh, actually, my daughters, of course. Aubrey just graduated last year. Uh, Maggie's still here. Mm -hmm. So um, Maggie got involved in seventh grade middle school, and I kind of started hanging around Foss Field, and uh, mm -hmm. Becky took me in and kind of started my career, so to speak, at Kingswood. So this is my, right. actually my fourth year here. So okay, uh, in the program. In fourth the program, year in the program. Yes. Yep, yep. First year leading it. Yep. Awesome. Um, softball background? So, you know, obviously you just didn't walk off the street and... Um, um, yes, or, yes and no, right. in a sense. <laughs> actually, um, way back when Aubrey was in first grade, uh, it was Parks and Rec. Tom Kayon was said, hey, yep. need some help? Can you yep. come help out? So I actually coached with Tom for probably wow, six years, I guess. And then it kind of started all over again, you know, back mm -hmm. with Maggie and uh, just all the way through turning to Cal Ripken. And like I said, here I am at yep. this point. So uh, love it. Nice, you know, love nice. It. Um, you had tryouts, yes. and uh, you know, I, I know that there was a, some numbers issues with the girls. We're trying to beef up the numbers program. Um, if I have my information right, I'm not positive I do. But how did the tryouts go in general? Uh, tryouts, tryouts went really well. We actually had 67 that actually registered. Oh my goodness! Um, no, although no. we know we lost a few before tryouts actually sure. started, yeah. like yeah. you normally yeah. do. Um, but we actually kept Becky kept 32, I think, in middle school. So we have our seventh and eighth grade team again for like the third year in a row now. Mm -hmm. um, I kept 12 at, J, at JV and 14 at varsity. Okay, so um, 67 is that's the, a whole program. The whole program, yeah, yes, okay. yes, right. yes, okay. yes. I, I look at it as a program. Of course, yeah, 67 would have been nice, but then again, it's tough because now there's a lot of cuts involved with that too. So yeah, and, yeah. and cutting is certainly no fun. No, um, it's not. It's not. So how's the team coming together? I mean, you know, I'm really excited about this. If we could uh, get out on the field and actually start making <laughs> it happen, yeah. but uh, you know, the one thing about coaching town ball and, and coming from middle school all the way, some of these girls have actually played with me for five, six years. Now, right. As you too well know, it's wow. mm -hmm. nice to keep that chemistry from from those core group of kids. And so we have what it takes this year. We have speed. We have good bats. We have. You know, I think we have decent pitching. I think we have we can compete this year. I think we can actually make it to the playoffs. So I'm hoping, That's exciting. I'm hoping. Yeah. Um, we just have to go out there and put it together. You know? talk, yeah, talk a little bit about your pitching, maybe pitching and catching. And um, We actually, Maggie, of course, Maggie Shaw is coming sure. back this year for our starting pitcher. We actually have uh, Cheyenne Cardinal, who actually is going to be sharing those uh, pitcher responsibilities. Um, actually, Brooke Eldridge might actually get in there a little bit. Great. Um, and I also have Audrey Daggett at uh, JV, who is probably going to be one of the next upcoming pitchers. She's very, mm -hmm. very strong. Both Maggie and her both dedicated the last several years to pitching lessons, which is huge, as you all know. Sure. If you want to get strong in any position or any sport, you have to put that extra time in. And pitching is a huge one. 
Um, Alexis Booth behind the plate uh, for first time varsity this year was with me last year with JV. Great. Hopefully, Arena Pettit will be uh, also be able to get back there. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, third game of the year last year, she blew her ACL out yeah. in PE class. <laughs> and so she is just getting ready to get cleared. But I don't think she'll be able to see a lot of behind the play time just from that type of inj injury this year. Anyway. Sure. So, but, um, from what I know about softball, it's all, almost all about the pitching. You yes. know, that one person, could, you know, a team that has that stud Dominance. pitcher yes. um, could ride them all the way to the end because there's no pitch limit in softball. There is One not. person could pitch the whole way. Yes. Do you feel like you have that kind of a dominant pitcher at the top, or are you going to need the supporting cast around? We're going to need the difference. supporting okay. cast around. And Maggie does a great job of keeping us in games, and I mean, she definitely can strike girls out. She's probably throwing mid fifties right now, yeah. working on her curveball, yeah. got a good changeup. But when you see some of the girls out there, John Stark girls throwing sixty three. I mean, you've got some girls throwing in the high high fifties. It's it's dominant pitching. I mean, yeah. it wins games, and uh, you know. All teams want to be deep at every position. Obviously, pitching is a great one to be deep at. Sure. Because um, yeah. you can't, even even with a softball, even though you can pitch all those games, it's still not good to constantly pitch every game. I mean, yeah. It still can wear, wear a yeah. pitcher out. Now you guys open up tomorrow. We open up. We were supposed yeah. to open up Monday, right. but we are going to Co-Brown tomorrow to hopefully some nice 70-degree weather. Mm -hmm. So we were actually able to get a scrimmage in with Pembroke. Okay. Uh, was a little rough. It so you've like been on the field. We've been bit. on the field once. Today's okay. our second time. <laughs> so, right. you know, when you live in the frozen tundra, it's sure. kind of, it's yeah. kind of, it's uh, kind of tough to play that. softball and yeah. baseball. So, yeah, this, this has been year. a rough. This has been a rough spring. So, I guess when you look at it, we're not in the same boat as some of the other schools like Kennett and stuff. I mean, those guys are probably way a couple weeks behind. I would imagine with the weather they had, they've had, right? The snow load up there. So, it it, it, it has been crazy. It's so, been um. Who are the uh, the dominant teams that you got to deal with this year in Division Two? Oh, we had our schedule change this year, of course. Every two years it changes. Yeah, so right. uh, I know Milford always strong. Uh, I think we play Sauhegan this year. Pelham. Uh, the Southern teams. Southern, a lot of Southern yeah. teams. Oh, for we a always play. We <laughs> always play Plymouth, of course. Plymouth. Yep. Sure. You know, they always strong team. Mm -hmm. um, Kennett, of course, we'll play Kennett twice. Um, Looking back last year at the way varsity played, there was just a lot of errors, and there was, you know, when you have five, six errors a game and five hits a game, it's hard to math doesn't sure. work out to win games. So, mm -hmm. I th I think things will be different this year. I hope I hope they will okay. be a different cast. Well, um, one of the traditions on uh, Mike and the Haas is that we like to have the teams come in when they make the playoffs as a playoff preview. Oh, that, so that'll give them yeah. something to look forward to. Um, <laughs> so that's so. I guess that means we're going to see you sometime in the uh, latter part of May. I hope so. All Can't right, wait. sounds good. Sounds awesome. great. Um, Coach, best of luck this season. Yeah. Um, Thanks, good luck. And, uh, appreciate you know, that. We're going to keep an eye on things, and we'll probably ask you for a few updates along the way. Let us know how things are going so we can represent you in the show. Absolutely. Um, Thank but you. Uh, thanks again for coming in, and good luck yeah. this year. Thank we'll you. see you at the field. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Well done. Welcome back to Mike and the Haas. Uh, as promised, we have Coach Megan Anderson of the girls lacrosse team, girls varsity lacrosse team. First year coach, welcome coach. Thank you. And you've brought a few players with you. Do you want to tell I us have. who you have? I've brought my captains. I have Ginny Skelly and Mackenzie Duran and Bridget Coughlin and Amanda Lapar. Welcome girls. So um, your first year at Kingswood. Um, and congratulations on you know joining the Kingswood family. So what brought you here? Thank you. Uh, I've been coming to Wolfboro since I was a kid, um, and actually these girls behind me brought me here. So there was an opening, and they said, "Hey, want to coach?" Um, I played in college, and then I you know started a family, got married, and did all those things. Hadn't played in a while, um, so I thought it was a good time in my life to try something new, and here I am. Awesome. Now you said you played in college. Have you coached before? No. Oh, this is exciting. Year. Wow. wow. Well, that's great. Where yeah. did you go to college? I went to St. Lawrence University. All right. What position did you play? For I was lacrosse? attack. Okay. Awesome. Yep. That's exciting. And before that, I was at Burke Academy in Burke, Maine. Yep. Right on. So. She's a Hall of Famer. Oh, oh, a Hall of Famer, Famer at Berwick? Right on. At St. Lawrence. At St. Lawrence. Okay. And Berwick, probably, right? No, not yet. No. <laughs> so you know, you know a little something about lacrosse. Yes. Yeah, that's exciting. 
Um, tell us a little bit about tryouts. Did you have a lot of girls try out, and how did you, how did you to come kind of decide the varsity versus JV? And yeah, we us? had um, 43, 43 girls try out, mm -hmm. and um, we had a pretty clear cut group of varsity players. It's about eighteen girls. Okay, and then we um, a pretty clear cut JV group, and there were some in between that were uh, girls that were you know still. They had a good sense of the field and positions and whatnot, but they were still working on their catching and throwing um, a little more accuracy. So those are our swingers this year. We have eight of them, which I think is more than in the past. Right. Um, but I wanted them to be able to play, um, you know, get the experience of playing JV and practicing with varsity and hopefully playing in some varsity games. So mm -hmm. we just had one girl uh, yesterday after the second game, we pulled her from swinger to varsity. She proved herself, so Good for told her. them all it's a yeah. fluid, fluid system this year. Right. So that's great. Yeah. Let's ask some questions of the girls. Girls, uh, want to give us your position and what kind of goals you have uh, for this season for you? So we'll start with you, Jenny. Yeah. So I play midfield, and I'd say our goal for the season is to obviously win as much as we can. Mm -hmm. But we're also growing a lot. We have a lot of really good underclassmen, so it's going to be a really good growing season for us, I think. Uh, I'm Mackenzie. I am an attack. And my goal for the season is to make playoffs this year and just enjoy our senior season and help underclassmen as much as we can. I'm Bridget. I play midfield. And I'd say our goal is to make playoffs because we missed it by one spot the last two years and also to be the best example I can be for the underclassmen because we have a really strong group of them. I'm Amanda. I play midfield slash defense. My goal for the season is to help out as much as I can on defense because I truly believe that defense wins championships. Mm. Wow, that's a true defender right yeah. there. There we go. Yes, it is. <laughs> that's awesome. All right, coach, now we're going to put you on the spot. Oh um, strengths and weaknesses of your teams. I know you haven't played much. You guys had a game yesterday, right? We had a game yesterday. How'd that go? It was good. Did you 14 win? nothing we won. Okay, that's pretty yeah. good. So that was pretty good. And yeah. who was yeah. that against? That was against Manchester Memorial. Okay. okay. Yeah. Nice. So um, now that you've seen your guys play, obviously you played well, I think. We did. Yeah. We've, we started off with um, two teams that are still you know, working on the basics. So we play Portsmouth next week, next Wednesday. So if anybody is looking for something to do, we mm -hmm. need some support for that game. <laughs> um, so wh what are some strengths and weaknesses you're seeing in your team that you need to work on or things that you can foster and develop a little bit more of? Um, we're working on transitions right now and double teaming on defense. Um, but just really just the accuracy of our passes. Um, We've got a really strong group of girls. We just have to tighten things up just a little bit. So I'll um, put you on the sport spot again, and they're okay. all right behind you. Uh oh. So mm -hmm. how how did you come up with this core of captains that that are phenomenal? They're awesome kids, right? Yeah. Obviously, oh, probably great. pretty good players. But how how did you kind of figure this out as to who your captains were going to be? Uh, we actually took a team vote. So mm -hmm. I'd gone back and forth um, because I know quite a few of the upperclassmen. Um, just from being in town and right. stopping by Bailey's Bubble and all those sort mm -hmm. of things yeah. where everybody works. It's good um, stop. Yep. <laughs> and um, so I went back and forth, should it be a coach's vote or a team vote, and we decided on the team vote, and mm -hmm. it was really crystal clear who the captain should be. Right. And um, so we have four of them, which is exciting, two captains and two assistants. That's awesome. In, yeah. in, in our short discussion, you obviously you picked uh, the right captains because I think each one of them talked about the need to help the develop the younger players mm -hmm. yeah. because that's a big part of captain and, you know, to grow the program. And it seems like these four are, are have one of their goals anyway, besides making the playoffs, is, is to do that. So you don't have just one season of success. You have that long-term success, which is nice to see. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we talk to the girls a lot, um, you know, outside of school too, and uh, they speak very highly of you. So oh, um, you. it's uh, it's really nice to see that the, the Kingswood Girls program seems to be in very good hands. So Thank you. Do you want some of the best news that's going to happen? Yeah. Because you guys are all going to be invited back onto the program okay. because we always do a uh, playoff preview. Yep. So we're going to have you guys in before the playoffs just to kind of talk about the season and 
and uh, how we're going to uh, get the uh, championship banner Perfect. in the gym. So, so, it's a, so it's a goal. So yeah. if you guys can make the playoffs, you're welcome back. All if right. yeah. not, uh, we'll see you next year. We <laughs> <laughs> we're looking forward to seeing you back yeah. this year. We will be here. Okay, yeah. sounds great. Well, thank you for coming on. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Girls, thank you. Yeah. Good, good luck this season. Thank good, you. good luck this year, and uh, we'll be right back. Mike and the Haas and Wolfboro Community Television. Welcome back to Mike and the Haas. Uh, Charlie, it was nice to have the softball coach and the lacrosse coach. Um, one of our goals has been to try to get them all in here, and we seem like they're on our way. Yeah, it's all, it's awesome, and it's, I really like the fact that um, the captains came. And yep. um, I really, you know, you had mentioned uh, with the coach, but it was great to see that our captains kind of, or the lacrosse captain stepped up and talked about kind of uh, helping the underclassmen, helping them to become better, mm -hmm. and then making them uh, leaders, the future leaders of the lacrosse team. Yep. And, you know, I meant what I said, that everybody, every girls lacrosse player that I have talked to has spoke very highly of the new coach. Yes. So um, that's a good start. Yes, and that's she's uh, obviously very humble. I mean, if you're in the yeah. Hall of Fame at St. Lawrence University, Division One school. you got game. Yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah. you do. So, so uh, that, that's awesome. Her. That's, uh, that's a, nice, uh, a nice hire for Kingswood Athletics. So, Charlie, let's, uh, let's go talk about some other teams that are local teams. Um, yeah. Celtics and the Bruins are... You know, heading towards the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Let's go with the Celtics first. They haven't started sure. yet, but they didn't really have a great start, even though before they started, because they yeah. lost the key police. They did, yeah. So they lost. Uh, they start this weekend, but they lost uh, Marcus Smart. Uh, you know, oblique injury. So they're saying he's out for probably minimum at least two rounds. And coming back from an injury like that, he, he's he's most likely done for the season. Wow. Um, so that's that hurts. I mean, just. Uh, I mean, he's the, just between his spirit and obviously his athletic ability and his gameplay. It's going to be hard to replace him. The defense. He, I mean, he he is that shutdown guy that they can put him on the other team's best player. Absolutely. And he will at least make them work for the points. Mm -hmm. And over a, you know a game, a whole game, he makes a difference. He doesn't. You know, they can replace the scoring. He's not a big scorer. Right. Um, but they're not going to be able to replace that intensity. No. He's a guy that dives on the floor for the ball. Right. So they, you know, they asked uh, they asked Danny Ainge, you know, his thoughts, and you know, the name that came out from uh, from Danny was Terry Rogier, um, and I and I agree. I mean, Terry Terry's able to step it up. I mean, he can't fill Marcus Smart's shoes, but he's certainly uh, uh, a, a good player to have out there. But you know, he might give up a little bit defensively compared to Marcus Smart, but he might give them a little bit more, more offensively. Offense. So sure. maybe those minutes go to him, and mm -hmm. you know, they can outscore teams. Right. Let's uh, talk about your good buddy Kyrie. All right. Okay. So he has. He has, uh, he has come out recently and yep. said um, all the right things again, that, you know, that he was uh, in the season frustrated and saying things that he probably shouldn't have said, that it was more all about me, 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 and now he has kind of made a shift to where, where it should be as a leader of a team and, and an all-star, that it's about the team. So is, is, it, is it enough? No. Okay. No, this, uh, you know, this was just one snapshot of what he should have been doing all along. And as you know, you know, true character comes out when your back's against the wall. Yeah. So what's going to happen if they lose game one? Right. You know, to the Indiana Pacers. Yeah. Right. Next week. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen when they lose game one? Is he going to revert back to pointing fingers know, and pointing fingers yeah. and you know, I need to do this or I, I am, you know, I need more help or I right. need to get these guys better, or is it going to be what we saw a little bit this week where he's admitting that he, you know, made a few mistakes? Right. Um, he seems to be on the same page with Brad Stevens, mm -hmm. um, but you know they've been winning a few games too, and you know, so, you know chemistry is always good with a winning team. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the, the real test yeah. of chemistry is when things aren't going well. Right. And I think we we brought up uh, our own Chip Skelly with the baseball team last year, the team mm -hmm. that won a lot of games, but their chemistry was good. That was a, a mark of good coaching, good leadership, and so on. Mm -hmm. um, the Celtics haven't done that. Their backs have been against the wall most of the year. Right. And they've been pointing fingers at each other, and it's been a really rotten year to, to follow the Celtics. Mm -hmm. so, so, no, I, I look, you I, know, I'm not giving him a pass yet. I want to see, good. Um, you know, what are what are reasonable expectations for the Celtics? At this point, you're a much better, bigger fan yeah, than I Yeah, I mean, well, the, re the reason, I mean, reasonable, what, what, before I say reasonable expectations, their expectations is they should be in the finals. This team should be in the finals. That's like, if you don't make the finals, it's an unsuccessful season. Okay. Now we're in a situation, can they even survive the first round? Yep. 
So that's kind of where we are. So I would say if you're asking me what a reasonable expectation is to win the first round. Based, um, based on their regular season. Based, based on their on regular their, season, yeah. based on all, all the issues that they've had, you know, in the locker room with Kyrie. Um, I, I, I don't know if they're going to get out of the first round. Can they, if they were to pull it together and get some of the mojo that they had last year, yeah. can they get by Toronto? I mean, if they had some of the mojo and they got their chemistry back together, they're a better team. Okay. Yes. On paper, they're a better team. And they're better than Milwaukee? On paper, they're a better team. And, and I actually, at the beginning of the season, I said that the Celtics have the ability, and they've, sh they've shown in the regular season, they could beat Golden State in the finals. They could beat Golden State in the regular season? Yeah. I, I, I think I, they I, could beat them in the finals. But, I mean, we're not, like, I'm still stuck, Mike, with can they get out of the first round. As, so, you, as you should yeah, be. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I don't know. I think it's going to, realistically, it's going to go six games. I mean, I'm saying the Celtics in six. Yeah, but you know that's once again I'm a homer, so I'm rooting for the Celtics, obviously. Absolutely, I mean that's. But I, I don't. Are, yeah, but, but I don't know if. Yeah, I don't know if 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 a week from now or two weeks from now, or the Celtics have been bumped from the playoffs, I'm not going to be surprised. No, I think that's about the best way to say it. Is yeah. that? Yeah, they can get by them, but is it going to be surprised if they lose to them based on this season? Absolutely not. Right. So, yeah. um, Bruins, real quick. Uh, mm -hmm. They, they started their playoffs last night, and they lost. They did. Pretty handily. Yeah, 4-1. 4-1. One. One. Mm -hmm. um, they did outshoot um, Toronto, but they've always had Toronto's number. And I, I watched a lot of the game, and they were saying that this is the fourth time in the last year and a half mm -hmm. that the Bruins had their full lineup without any injuries. <laughs> and that's what happened. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think... I, I think with hockey, which is a little bit different than basketball, is that, and we see it often, the number eight team could beat the number one team right. because hockey is such an emotional sport. Mm -hmm. And a team that wants it more, and these guys are all talented, yeah. and the team that wants it more you know, generally wins. Mm -hmm. we, we saw Tampa lose their first round game, too, against yeah. Columbus. So that, was a one, that was a one versus eight. Yep. Um, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm nervous. I do believe I'm more optimistic about the Bruins' long-term approach, mm -hmm. but then again, I think that they could lose each series that they're in mm -hmm. because if the other team brings it, you run into a hot goalie, you know, whatever. Right. I, and it's just going to be interesting. Uh, but now they put themselves in a must-win situation for, yes. for Saturday. Yeah. It's an absolute must-win, but I will say there is nothing like playoff hockey. Yeah, playoff hockey is phenomenal. So much fun to watch. It's it's the the crowd. Everything is going at a you know 100. Yeah. percent It's just it's different. I, I almost attribute it to a European soccer game. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. so much at stake, and, yeah. and the crowd is constant the whole time. Right. It's physical. It's just. And I, speaking of with the Bruins, I don't. Um, Tuka Rask. I don't. Uh, I'm not overly concerned with Tuka Rask's play. I think he was in, t in a tough position last night. I mean, he you know he had the penalty shot, the, the goals that were scored against him. A couple of them were breakaways. Yep. So you can't you can't necessarily blame a goaltender for that. I'll throw a stat at you. Yep. Since the middle of February, Tuka Rask is the second lowest rated goalie in the NHL. Okay. That's um, not a good thing. Right? Not, <laughs> it is not a good thing. So they're not going with hot. I wouldn't be surprised if they if they sat Tuka in the second game. Yeah. I think Cassidy is Coach Cassidy. Um, he's not afraid to make moves. He's not afraid to make changes. He's not afraid to coach. Right. And. Uh, it would it wouldn't surprise me, and I and I'd support it. I, I would support it. You know, the last time that Tuca got hot is right before, was right after when he got sat down. Right. So you know, you need. So that. maybe he needs that. Yeah. All right. Um, we've got a few minutes left. Uh, the Red Sox are um, def on their way to defending their title. Yeah. Or not. Well, <laughs> we are only thirteen games in. We are, but uh, a four and nine record is not a great start by no. any calculations. No. Um, they would be 0 and 13 if Mitch Moreland wasn't there. Yep, Mitch Moreland has made some uh, really big hits. He's, he's been got like 12 RBIs. He's been instrumental yep. in all four of their wins. Yeah, absolutely. Whether it be a go ahead home run, a yep. go ahead double, a, a tying home run, um, they would be 0 and 13 yeah. if Mitch Moreland wasn't there. Think about that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of the worst starts for the Reds in Red Sox history. Yeah. Um, their pitching has been, for the most part, abysmal. Yeah. Um, Bull, bullpen hasn't been too, too bad. The bullpen has not been too... <laughs> we're really, you know... Yeah, we're really both <laughs> too, too bad. But, yeah. um, but I, you get I, nervous. You get nervous about Chris Sale. 
And especially when Chris Sale is saying he's trying to figure it out. I mean, Chris Sale shouldn't be figuring it out. He, he should know what it is. Yeah. And, and he's, and, and you know, it's great that he's going to try to figure it out, but he sounds like David Price of last year, oh. you know, trying to figure it out. Yeah, on the, on the fly. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know if I put all on them because they handled spring training. I think we addressed that last week. We did, week. yeah. Uh, handled spring training a little different because they pitched so late into the season. But um, my youngest asked me, says, at what point is the season lost? And I said, I think that they got to beat a 500 by May 1st. Mm -hmm. You know, so right now they're you know, five games below. Right. Um, I think 500 by May 1st. Nobody's running away with it in the East, right. you know, which is good. Um, but, you know, their, their projection right now is somewhere around 90 wins if they played 600 ball the rest of the way. Right. Uh, what do you think of uh, Pedroia being back? Well, right now he's fitting right in. Yeah. You know, he's certainly not hurting him. No. Nope. You know, he had a big hit last night. Mm -hmm. um, he's been playing good defense. He looks he's good. playing great defense. He yeah. looks good. And, you know, I, what I'm, I guess I'm a little bit relieved, and this is a good thing for Pedroia, is that they were so bad on the West Coast without Pedroia mm -hmm. that you can't put their slide on Pedroia. <laughs> you can't blame them. No, you know, yeah, right. So, I mean, I think that, that it's good because if they were doing this with Pedroia in the lineup, all fingers would probably be pointing towards him. Right. Um, so they don't have that problem. So now it's, it's working. You know, the thing with baseball, and I was, uh, when I was walking over here, I mean, you could have five or six 300 hitters. You could have, you know, guys with, you know, three ERAs. But it's timing. Mm -hmm. If, the, if the, the game where you score a bunch of runs doesn't match up the game that you give up a bunch of runs, then you're going to lose that game and right. vice versa. If you score a bunch of runs on games that you, you know, have a shutout, it's not going to make a difference, right? You know, so it's timing. It's getting those big hits when it matters. You know, if a guy has 100 RBIs, but none of them matter, right? And last year, everything mattered. Their timing was perfect, and so if their pitchers let up six runs, they scored seven. Mm -hmm. If their pitchers let up two runs, they scored three. Right. You know, and that timing was there, and so what I besides Mitch Moreland, the big hit hasn't been there. No, uh, Martinez is doing okay. I mean, but other than that. You know. Well, he's but his stats are good, but he ha has he had a big hit? No, no big hits, no, no big hits. None. Yeah, you know he's yeah he's got he's got he's a, hitting the ball. He's hitting the ball, but yeah. if you're not hitting the ball when guys are on base, if you're not hitting sure. the ball when you know the second and third and two outs and so on, then it doesn't matter. Right. So these guys have to do a little bit better as far as timing, and I don't know if I mean you can't try to do better when it's timing. It's just you know it has to be, it has to be innate yeah. there, and that's why you know a major league baseball season. Yeah, it has something to do with talent, but. There's some luck involved too, yep. and there's some some um, clutch. Mm -hmm. If there if clutch does exist, there's yeah. some clutch. So they've got three coming up with Baltimore. So uh, they need to take at least two out of the three, and uh, continue continuing to dig dig towards that 500 mark. Uh, I think we said that about Arizona too. Did we? Uh, I Probably. did. But, yeah, yeah I'm sure I, think I did. That was a triple A team that they yeah. were supposed to take. I, <laughs> I did not say triple A team. I did. Yes, I know you did. <laughs> I did. <laughs> So, all right, all right, Charlie. We have anything else? I don't think so, Mike. Do you want to uh, pitch the football golf outing one more time? Oh yeah, sure. Why not? Once again on uh, June twenty second of the football golf outing at the Indian Mound Golf Course in Ossipee, New Hampshire. We're looking for players. We're looking for people that would like to sponsor holes or give uh, any type of gift to the football program. Um, sponsored a little bit by uh, friends of Kingswood Football. Love for you to visit the Facebook page, and we'd uh, more importantly love to see you play golf with us. So if you have any questions about that, you can reach out to me, uh, Charlie Hossack, or Mary DeMacy. Speaking of golf, the Masters is going on right ah, now. Ah, that's right. So yeah. let's we'll talk about the Masters next week. Let's a do it. Golf Should we wear our green jackets? We can't. Well, we haven't won it. No. I guess that's <laughs> going to do it for us, Charlie. All right. You got uh, anything else, Mike? No, I'm good. Uh, thank you for tuning in to Mike and the Hoss at Wolfboro Community Television. For Mike the Name, Charlie Hossack, we will see you next week. Go Knights. Go Knights. Go Knights.